How to identify the sources of less left anti-Semitism in order to fight it by Eve Coleman. Quote, and yes, we can oppose Israel's foreign policy without being anti-Semitic. End quote. David Rashlin, or Rashlin, R-A-C-H-L-I-N-E, mayor of Fréjus, a member of the proto-fascist National Front. The first painful revision we must make if we really want to get rid of the ambiguities of current left anti-Zionism is to fully recognize the existence of an old anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist, anti-Semitic tradition, particularly in the left and far left in Europe, but also on other continents. To my knowledge, only two groups with very different political backgrounds have publicly denounced the ambiguities of leftist and anti-globalization circles in this regard. The Alliance for Workers' Liberty in Britain, a, quote, Trotskyist, end quote, group, and Dorbrach, ex de fabel fan de illegal, a Dutch organization which can be roughly labeled as, quote, anarchist communist, end quote. I could also mention the German anti-Deutsche, originating from Maoist and autonomous groups, but their current positions can't be classified as far left nor left as they have become synonymous with a fanatical defense of U.S. and Israel policies on behalf of a radical condemnation of German nationalism. No French anarchist or far-left group has ever raised the question of left anti-Semitism and tried to fight it seriously in its own ranks. By itself, the silence about the anti-Semitic stand-up comedian and fascist politician Dudon, nay, I'm saying that right, D-E-U-D-O-N-N-E -E with an accent, for a decade speaks for itself, and the anarchist defenders of Dudon's quote, freedom of expression, end quote, which was supposedly violated by the little, quote, repression, end quote, waged by Minister of Interior Manuel Valls, do not encourage us to believe in any awareness or self-criticism of their past cowardice. We could also mention the countless times when anti-Semitic conspiracist websites and authors are quoted by leftist militants in their posts, or the numerous links from, quote, radical, end quote, politicians, organizations, or alternative websites to these same reactionary websites. This indifference can only make the left particularly vulnerable to the criticisms formulated by unscrupulous journalists and historians, but also by people of good faith who are not obsessed with Israel and Palestine from morning to night and despise anti-Semitism, even wrapped in, quote, left, end quote, arguments. Leftist or anarchist groups in France, as elsewhere, usually deny this phenomenon or reduce it to the ravings of a few embittered and isolated individuals or some ex-brainless ultra-lefts who join the far right or claim it simply, quote, Zionist, end quote, calumnies to silence any criticism of Israel. To undertake such a reflection on current left anti-Semitism, one already needs to know the traditional mechanisms of Christian and Muslim anti-Judaism and racial anti-Semitism, their evolution, and their new customs and mutations. If you think that anti-Semitism is a phenomenon of the past and is disappearing, if you reduce it to Christian or medieval anti-Judaism or to Nazi racial theories, and if you believe that the only present danger is, quote, Islamophobia, end quote, then you do not need to get involved or bothered by the struggle against anti-Semitism. Even worse, any person who raises the subject is necessarily a cop, a Zionist, a neoconservative, or a paranoid anti-conspiracist. One second. To explain anti-imperialist, anti-capitalist, left anti-Semitism, one can distinguish several factors. This article will present them succinctly, but they obviously need to be described at greater length. 1. Marxists and anarchists have been unable to define an efficient material position on the so-called, quote, Jewish question, end quote, as well as on other national, religious, or cultural issues. 
For Marx's currents, at least, this attitude was understandable in the 19th century and until the October Revolution because they believed in the imminence of capitalist collapse. This collapse would give way to socialism, a new social economic system supposed to solve all, quote, secondary, end quote, issues, racism, anti-Semitism, nationalism, domination of women, etc., bequeathed by the, quote, old world, end quote. Let's remind all, quote, anti-Zionists, end quote, who pay respect to the 20th and 21st century Marxist thinkers who dare to claim the heritage of the Bund that this party was violently denounced by Plekhanov. He called them, quote, seasick Zionists, end quote, and Lenin. In his critical, quote, remarks on the national question, quote, end quote, written in 1913, Lenin mentions, quote, the most oppressed and persecuted nation, the Jews, end quote, but then writes, quote, whoever directly or indirectly puts forward the slogan of Jewish, quote, national culture, end quote, is whatever his good intentions may be, an enemy of the proletariat, a supporter of all that is outmoded and connected with caste among the Jewish people. He is an accomplice of the rabbis and the bourgeoisie, end quote. In short, that Vladimir Illich was also, quote, seasick, end quote, when he wrote about the Jewish question and did not know how to deal with it. Finally, let's note that the Bund was repressed by the Soviet state in 1919, thus by Lenin and Trotsky in power, not by Stalin, and forced to disband in March 1920. Today, dozens of new nation states have been created. Nationalist ideologies have triumphed in third world countries from victorious guerrillas, China, Cuba, Algeria, Vietnam, Mozambique, Angola, etc. to current Latin American populist regimes. Nationalism has also triumphed in Western countries, see the predominant influence of, quote, anti-fascist and, quote, bourgeois and Stalinist resistance movements in Europe in the 1950s and 1960s, and then the emergence of separatist regionalisms in the Basque country, Scotland, etc. In such a context, indifference to the Jewish question, usually coupled with opportunism vis-a-vis -vis other nationalisms or regionalisms, is no longer tenable without making a thorough policy review and serious updating. And it's precisely because this indifference is no longer tenable that traditional internationalist principles defend in theory by left defended in theory by leftist or anarchist groups are more easily emptied of their original proletarian a national content. It's because of this indifference that the far left switched from a support to the common struggle of Israeli, Israeli and Arab proletariats until the late 1960s to uncritical support for Hamas and the PFLP. Excuse me, or the PFLP. And it threw into the dustbin any reference to the Israeli working class or even Arab working classes. You must recognize that principled opposition to bourgeois nationalism has rarely been applied by so-called revolutionary groups. It does not mean this position is wrong today, quite the contrary, but it must be based, refounded on solid coherent arguments and on a, quote, concrete analysis of the concrete situation, end quote. Two, the revolutionary left suffers from a lack of knowledge of Jewish history and Jewish religion. See, for example, the permanent denunciation of an alleged elitism or superiority complex of the, quote, chosen people, end quote. This denunciation is based on a misunderstanding for the most ignorant militants, or a gross falsification of the, for the astute anti-Semites. We could also quote its ignorance of Jewish liberation theology, while its Christian and Muslim versions are supported with enthusiasm by leftist and anti-globalization circles. In daily propaganda and in some more theoretical writings, the revolutionary left tends to always personalize to me three. In daily propaganda and in some more theoretical writings, the revolutionary left tends to always personalize and demonize some individual exploiters, especially usurers, speculators, financers, and bankers, and among them especially the Jews from Rothschild to Madoff or to Madoff. Not to mention Goldman Sachs. Dominique Strauss-Kahn, French Jewish intellectuals, and American neoconservatives wearing a so-called, quote, Jewish, end quote, name. 
to focus only on the misdeeds of banks, tax havens, speculative bubbles, and other words on, quote, unproductive, end quote, capitalism, yesterday accused of being, quote, cosmopolitan, end quote, today of being, quote, globalist, end quote, which is opposed to, quote, productive, end quote, capitalism rooted in national soil, one can find such themes in the anti-globalization movement, indignatos, excuse me, indignados, Latin American status or non-status left, etc. This inevitably leads the left to ignore in its daily propaganda the functioning of the capitalist system. A rigorous critique requires a much more complicated propaganda than the simple denunciation of some stock speculators, cynical billionaires, fat cigar smokers, or, quote, vampire, end quote, capitalists. Four. The left is under the dangerous illusion that anti-Semitic anti-capitalism can have a, quote, progressive, end quote, dimension. In other words, anti-Semitic proletarians are wrong to limit their hatred of the system to some Jews or even to Jews as a pseudo, quote, privileged, end quote, group. But it does not matter. According to this, quote, theory, end quote, confusion will soon disappear because the exploited will open their eyes and quickly realize the need to fight all capitalists. They will fight the capitalist system as a whole, not just the so-called, quote, Jewish, end quote, bank or finance. They will understand that capitalism must be replaced by another social organization, abolition of wage labor and the state. The old anti-capitalist anti-Zionism persists, but it has been modernized, especially in the form of, quote, anti-imperialist, end quote, anti-Zionism in the Near and Middle East, as well as in other regions of the South, in Muslim communities of major Western cities, but also under the influence of populist leftist regimes in Latin America. All this combines perfectly with the anti-Judaism revived and restored by certain tendencies of political Islam. 5. The left underestimates and even denies the importance of anti-Judaism and of modern anti-Semitism in so-called, quote, Muslim, end quote, countries. The 57 states of the OIC, Organization of Islamic Cooperation, and its influence in main Western cities, facilitated by the presence of satellite channels, imams trained in Saudi Arabia or in ultra-conservative religious institutions, etc. This denial of anti-Semitism is based on a misunderstanding of Islam and its various currents. See, for example, how leftists and anti-globalization movements minimize the historical conflicts between Sunnis and Shias in the Middle East and assign primary responsibility for these century-old religious rivalries to the American-European intervention in Iraq in 2003, exclamation point. Of the discriminatory, discriminatory Dimi status for centuries, which combines with the left silence about pogroms in Arab and Muslim countries. Of the political role played by religion in the Near and the Middle East, including in so called included in excuse me, including in so called national liberation movements during the twentieth and twenty first centuries, of the diffusion of European far right ideas in the Arab Muslim world, massive diffusion of the protocol of the protocols of the elders of Zion, whose absurdities are included both in the Hamas charter as well as in the soap operas or textbooks. Excuse me, as well as in soap operas or textbooks, a Holocaust deniers conference in Iran, Arabic translations of books written by French Holocaust denier Roger Garadi, who used to be a communist, by the way. It's probably one of the things that's probably like uh, should be considered um, when talking about left anti Semitism in France, especially, is the way that uh, Roger Garaudy, um, I think, I believe his biography is that he converted to Islam when he married a particular woman, and in that process, or after that process, or before that process, at some point, he um, began denying the Holocaust, and then if you're listening, if, I don't know if I've uploaded this article by the time I upload this one, but in the Lauren Goldner uh, review of that book from... Uh, from France on the history of the ultra left, which is like this big, like pretty reactionary tome about how like everything 
like the, the ultra left critique of anti fascism led to negationism. Um, but the very fact that so many people that at least these two instances that you can think of of major left wing thinkers, um, or not maybe not major but left wing thinkers in France, uh, coming to very uh anti Semitic uh, political views, um, uh, should be should raise some eyebrows. It's like how is that possible? How can that be? Anyway. Of the Arab regime's active role in the expulsion of 900,000 Jews after 1948 from countries where they had lived for centuries, often even before the introduction of Islam. This ignorance is reinforced by the use of a Baroque mistaken notion borrowed from 19th century linguistics, the existence of so-called, quote, Semitic peoples, end quote. This linguistic concept has been transferred to anthropology, Jews and Arabs therefore being stored in the same ethnic group contrary to the, all the lessons of history, and the use of this fake anthropological notion is designated to delegitimize the concept of anti-Semitism and thus fight against this scourge. Um, I think if you listen to the article that I have about... Uh, fuck, it was from somebody from Germany... Um, Tim Strasberg, I think, was the name, but it was from Jungle World, and it's about how um, Edward Said's uh, ideas from Orientalism, uh, his book Orientalism, Orientalism from 1978, I believe, uh, became um, fairly mainstream within at least academic thought, and then if it's mainstream in academic thought, it kind of translates into the activist mainstream as well as into... Uh, certain corners of the political mainstream. Um, but he talks about how Edward Said was guilty of this, of collapsing Arabs and Jews into the same, quote, like, Semitic people. So there's actually no difference be between Jews and Arabs. They're all part of the Semites. And, uh, you know, and so there's... So if Jews are different from Arabs, it's usually the dis a distinction between, you know, the imperialist, you know, the Jews representing the imperialist core and the Arabs re representing the Oriental other. So this kind of idea of just the semantic slippage of just categorizing, you know, Semitic peoples into this box. And it also brings to mind, you know, if you ever watch any of uh, Minister Farrakhan's speeches, he always consistently refers to Jews as the so-called Jews. Meaning, they're not, like, you know, they're not real Semites, or something like that. I'm not an expert on Farrakhan, I'm not an expert on Saeed, but I'm just trying to draw some comparisons between what's being said in this article. And I'm thinking out loud, so forgive me for thinking out loud, but maybe you get some something out of it. Um, Alright. Six. Leftists and anarchists who wish to get rid of, at a very cheap price, the serious political problems posed by the European Judaicide, starting with the apathy or embarrassed silence of the left in front of the, quote, Shoah, end quote, during and after the Second World War. Faced with this problem, left anti-Zionists use several dishonest methods. They reduce anti-Semitism they reduce anti-Semitism to a very distant, almost prehistoric past. This allows them to maintain the fiction of an anti-fascist resistance which fought the Judeocide, and also to claim that Nazi racial anti-Semitism no longer exists, therefore we need to, quote, move on, end quote. The la they loudly denounce economic collaboration between, quote, Zionists, end quote, and Nazis, hence the vile term, Zionazis. Never heard that one before. Quote Zionazis. End quote. I guess I should have heard that before. It sounds uh, fairly uh, <laughs> a fairly easy um, collapsing of words to make. Hence the vile term Zionazis and the swastika stuck on Israeli flags in quote pro-Palestinian end quote demonstrations through the Havara. Or, quote, transfer agreement, end quote, signed in 19, 
1933. This agreement functioned until 1939 and allowed the Nazis to extort money from 50,000 Jews who were able to emigrate to, emigrate to Palestine. Dishonest anti-Zionists also exaggerate the importance of the Stern Gang, which never counted more than 100 members in Palestine, which tried to negotiate with the Nazis in order to help as many Jews as possible to leave Europe and not be exterminated. If you compare the arguments of Holocaust deniers like Farrison with the arguments of many anti-Zionists, they are exactly the same on this point. They focus on the collaboration between Judenretta, Jewish councils, with German authorities during the Second World War as if this, quote, collaboration, end quote, took place in peacetime in a peaceful atmosphere and without the use of torture, blackmail, extortion, assassination, and establishment of a clandestine administration to organize the Judeocide. Meanwhile, dishonest anti-Zionists ignore or deny the importance of all forms of passive or active resistance, unarmed or armed, in the various Jewish communities between 1939 and 1945. The, they keep silent about the fact that resistant Jews received almost no help from the Allied, quote, democratic, end quote, powers and from the, quote, communist, end quote, anti-Nazi resistance movements. Tom? Yeah? It's one o'clock. What time do you think you're leaving? Uh, probably like, uh, 2.33. Okay, I'm gonna run up giant. All right, good luck. Stay dry. Where am I? That's my father, Timmy. They keep silent about the fact that resistant Jews received almost no help from the, quote, the Allied, quote, democratic powers and from, quote, communist and, quote, anti-Nazi resistance movements. This double negation allows the left to excuse its silence during the Judeo side to perpetuate the legend <coughs> of an eternal Jewish passivity and to imply or assert a complicity between Jews and Nazis. In a more prosaic and trivial manner, the left reduces the fear of present anti-Semitism to an age-old Jewish, quote, paranoia, end quote. This last silly psychological explanation of a supposed Jewish and Israeli, quote, paranoia, end quote, is paralleled by the term, quote, self-hatred, end quote, used by reactionary Jews against any progressive or anti-Zionist Jew. We can only advise anti-Zionists to think a little about the content of their propaganda. Did they ever notice that the victims of racism, sexism, and homophobia are accused by their oppressors of being, quote, paranoid, end quote, quote, obsessive, end quote, or, quote, persecution maniacs, end quote? Don't they see a problem in their cheap psychological explanation about Jewish and Israeli pathology? Today, leftists and anarchists—excuse me, seven. Today, leftists and anarchists recycle the main themes of left anti-Zionism with an anti-Semitic tone, an ideology initially conceived by Russian and East European Stalinists. The basic arguments of current left anti-Zionism were made by Soviet Stalinists, who themselves were anti-Semitic as evidenced by the arrest and subsequent execution of the leaders of the Jewish Anti-Fascist Committee in 1952, the Jewish Doctors Trial in the USSR in 1953, quote, Every Zionist is an agent of U.S. intelligence services, end quote, said Stalin, quote, Jewish nationalists think their nation was saved by the United States, a country where they can become rich and bourgeois. They think they owe a debt to the Americans. Among my doctors, there are many Zionists, end quote. The anti-Semitic trials in Czechoslovakia, 1952, I believe that's the Schlansky trial, and the anti-Semitic campaigns in Poland, 1952-1968. It, were, it was Soviet Stalinists and their left nationalist allies, first in the Eastern Bloc and Arab countries, and finally globally, who transformed the word, quote, Zionist, end quote, into a political insult and a religious term synonym of evil. They have thus introduced a very convenient way of replacing the word, quote, Jew, end quote, and concealing anti-Semitism. <laughs> 
But the question is even more complex. Stalinist anti-Zionism has also been spread by, quote, communist, end quote, Jews who were in favor of a total assimilation of Jewish people and conceived that socialism would end all discriminations. In the, quote, people's democracies, end quote, Jewish Stalinist had a significant influence in justice, police forces, public administration, and the party apparatus, and even at its head. This overrepresentation of Jews in the ruling circles of some, quote, people's democracies, end quote, Hungary being the most extreme example, had very negative consequences for the Jews. The cynical games of the USSR and pseudo-socialist states led Stalinist Jews to assume responsibility for state repression against workers and peasants living behind the Iron Curtain and even for pogroms in the early years of the, quote, communist, end quote, regimes. Stalinist Jews also helped to erase the specificity of the Judeocide and the responsibilities of Eastern European populations. Supported by Stalinist Jews, this official, quote, communist, end quote, silence has actually fueled popular anti-Semitism on various contradictory or complementary themes. Quote, communist and Jews work hand in hand, end quote. Quote, Jewish Holocaust survivors are favored by the communist state, end quote. Quote, Jews are not really part of our nation, end quote. Even crazier if possible, quote, former Jewish capitalist and Jewish communist in power agreed to exploit us, end quote. Today we can see the harmful results of this vicious left anti-Semitism which targeted Jews in all countries of the Eastern Bloc. In the Near and Middle East, many local members and leaders of the, quote, communist, end quote, parties were anti-Zionist Jews. Local Stalinist parties, starting with the Palestinian party, had not much to say against Muslim anti-Judaism and anti-Semitism and against pogroms in Palestine, e.g. E the pogrom of Hebron in 1929, during which it was not the new European Jewish settlers who were massacred, but the Jews whose ancestors lived for centuries in Palestine. This speaks volumes about Palestinian anti-colonialism and its religious dimensions, fundamentally linked to the subordinate place Jewish <coughs> dinis occupied in societies governed by Islam. 8. Outside Israel, irresponsible leftist or anarchist anti-Zionists recycle without any precaution debates and concepts used within anti-Israeli excuse me, within Israeli society. Sorry, there isn't a word with anti, like, just below it, so I was like, anti. For the last 20 years, quote, post-Zionist or anti-Zionist currents have, have appeared in, Israeli, in, in the Israeli intelligentsia. The spokesmen of these currents, quote, new historians, end quote, like Elon Pop, uh, Pepe, or Pape, I can't remember how to pronounce his name, P-A-P-P-E. He's all over the place. He's like the, you know, he's all over uh, like flicking democracy now and shit like that. Uh, Benny Morris before his quote Zionist turn. Uh, Benny Morris is a um, historian of uh, Israel Palestine. If you, I recommend listening to some of his lectures or uh, I think he has articles on the Fathom website. Tom Segev and scholars such as Sand, uh, isn't it Shlomo Sand? Zertel and Kimmerling, are Jews who are not anti-Semitic. Although some Israelis accuse them of the worst deviations, I, e.g. in the book, quote, in, in the book Post-Zionism, Post-Holocaust, by Elanan Yakira, which offers a sophisticated but reactionary argument. One second. Most Israelis, including, quote, Zionist, end quote, compare Nazi Germany with their country. In 1995, during the far-right campaign against Robin, uh, 
R-A-B-I-N, which began, which led to his assassination, he was represented with an SS uniform on posters by Israeli opponents. Such analogies, even if they are false and politically dangerous, have a meaning in Israel, given the common memory shared by Israelis about the Judeocide, regardless of their political positions. When these comparisons or analogies are carelessly transferred into Europe, North America, and Latin America, they have a different meaning because in these continents, the left hardly mobilized its forces against the Judeocide when it took place. After the Second World War, the left and the right did everything they could to prevent Jewish resistance to reclaim their Jewishness. Resistance. Excuse me. R-E-S-I-S-T-A-N-T-S. Not resistance with the C-E at the end. To reclaim their Jewishness and their specific rights as victims of the genocide. In the Eastern Bloc, as well as in the West, and today on these two continents, the left and far left do not pay any attention to the Judeocide. They call its existence only to compare, they recall its existence only to compare the methods of the Israeli military forces against the Palestinians with the methods of the Nazis against the Jews. These comparisons are reactionary and only help Holocaust deniers and neo fascists to spread their racist propaganda. The fact that Israeli anti-Zionists deliberately ignore the dangers of these comparisons is very problematic but understandable. They discuss in a society where everyone knows what the Judeocide has been. The fact that Western anti-Zionists have no historical memory about the cowardice of the Western left during the Second World War and about the anti-Semitic origins of Stalinist anti-Zionism is much more disturbing. 9. Today, leftist currents report, excuse me, support Anglo-Saxon multiculturalist and post-colonial theories, which are fashionable in academic circles and have been imported into Europe, often to fight the influence of Marxism and the very idea of social revolution. The ideological influence has pushed many European leftists to divide Western societies into two antagonistic blocks, the dominant, quote, whites, end quote, and their accomplices, and the dominated, quote, non-whites, end quote. The opposition between these two imaginary categories is understood as much more important than the opposition between bourgeois and proletarians. As Jews belong to the, quote, whites, end quote, any criticism of current modern anti-Semitism is suppressed or disqualified by trendier theories, postmodernism, deconstruction, gender studies, postcolonialism, etc. Leftist militants and even the average leftist or anti-globalization intellectual are unable to understand that one can be, quote, white, end quote, and at the same time, victim of racist discrimination. In their imagination, the essential racist domination, if not the unique domination, targets, quote, non-whites, end quote, of, quote, post-colonial, end quote, origin. If a Jew is a victim of a classic anti-Semitic, excuse me, of classic anti-Semitic racism, religious, economic, and or racial, or modern anti-Semitism, hidden under a, quote, anti-Zionist, end quote, varnish, he has only one solution— to shut his mouth, since he or she belongs to the world of the dominant, quote, whites, end quote, and their accomplices. This political intransigence does not apply to homosexual, lesbian, queer, and transgender people and women, all groups whose domination is recognized by multiculturalist leftists, even if they belong to the petty bourgeoisie or to the bourgeoisie. This is even true if these minorities are, quote, white, end quote, therefore supposedly inherently complicit in the exploitation and domination of the, quote, non-whites, end quote. There is a curious convergence between three forces. The European far right, which condemns feminism as a, quote, Jewish invention, end quote, and a, quote, unnatural, end quote, theory. Muslim fundamentalists who present feminism as a Western anti-religious ideology and condemn Middle and Far East feminists as traitors sold to the, quote, American Zionist axis of evil, end quote. 
and Western multiculturalists who believe that, quote, sectarian secular, excuse me, that, quote, sectarian secularist, end quote, feminists are all racist and colonialist whites. Simultaneously attacked by these three forces, atheist feminists, or even just secular feminists, wherever they are active on this planet, are in a very precarious situation, especially if they are not fierce, quote, anti-Zionist, end quote, who denounce the crimes of Israel every morning before taking their breakfast. Ten. The term Islamophobia... Actually, give me one second. Fuck. Forgive me. Sorry, everybody. <clears throat> Didn't want to restart, stop the recording, and then have to press record again. I mean, I could spend hours editing these things to make them sound nice, but it's really not worth it. Five people listen in the entire universe. It's not f fucking worth it. So, uh, these recordings suck, so forgive me. Anyway, back to reading. Ten. The term, quote, Islamophobia, end quote, imposed inside international institutions by the 57 states of the Organization of the Islamic Conference mixes and confuses several very different phenomena. Pseudoscientific 19th century racism, which targets today in Europe migrants coming from North Africa, Near and Middle East, and Sub-Saharan Africa, this racism is hidden under a culturalist dressing, clash of civ civilizations, hypocritical, defense of enlightenment and feminism by the right and far-right parties. Systematic or institutional racism, which allows a hidden domination under the mask of democratic or republican equality. Anti-Muslim religious passions fueled by Christian political parties or competing churches. Consequences of French, excuse me, of Franco-Algerian war. Difficult social integration of former French settlers in France, which fuels anti-Muslim resentment among, quote, poor whites, end quote, and provides a basis for right and far-right parties. Consequences of current conflicts in the Near and Middle East, forced exile of Christian populations, ethnic cleansing of Christians, which can and will only breed resentment against Islam in the West. Loss of geopolitical influence of former European colonial powers, France, Great Britain, and setbacks of the American power. Western ruling classes constantly try to compensate their setbacks with, quote, humanitarian interventions, end quote. These interventions are launched in the name of a so-called democratic civilization fighting against, quote, Islamic or, quote, jihadist barbarism. This kind of propaganda can only feed hostility against Muslim workers who live in Europe or America. Identitarian anxieties, which st stimulate European nationalism and xenophobia, given the chaotic construction of the European Union. And atheist rationalist criticisms of religion. The concept of Islamophobia deliberately confuses all these very diverse phenomena and dimensions. Its main aim is to marginalize and discredit any criticism against modern anti-Semitism on behalf of the fight against Islamophobia, against neoconservative arguments, but also against rationalism and universalism. Universalism is condemned as too Western, quote, too white, end quote, or quote, or implicitly, quote, too Jewish, end quote, or all three at once. Eleven.
The critical, the criminal policy of Israel and the hatred it arouses amongst Palestinians and neighboring peoples do not obviously facilitate the understanding of current modern anti-Semitism. Israeli nationalism popularizes all these frustrations and excuse me, polarizes all these frustrations and resentments. This nationalism defended the right of the victims of the Judeocide to benefit from a reliable state protection after 1945. Claim the historic right of the Jewish community living in Palestine not to be expelled by Palestinian or Arab nationalists. Built a Jewish state with all the ensuing war crimes that may encourage such an ethno-religious definition. Presents Jewish religion as monolithic and therefore in fact as dog a dogmatic and sectarian religion. Claims the right to Jewish self-determination like any liberation movement has a special alliance with the main current Western power, the United States, after having been initially supported by Russian imperialism, this is in parentheses, all leftists nostalgic for the Soviet Union hide this fact. Encourages the illusion that Israel can exist while permanently ignoring the dis or despising Near and Middle East history and their religious, social, and political determinisms. Conducts a permanent territorial expansion which resembles an ethnic cleansing and makes impossible the creation of a Palestinian state enjoying the same natural and geographical advantages, access to the sea, energy and water, for example. Faced with a complex and contradictory state ideology, quote, Zionism, end quote, which is inspired by century-old religious traditions, a socialist Zionist heritage, and European bourgeois 19th century nationalism, it's easier and more convenient for the average leftist or anti-globalization activist for to, get the age -old, to forget the age-old anti-Semitism which plagued the European continent where he lives, and especially to forget the anti-capitalist forms of left anti-Semitism. This allows him or her to adopt a radical posture without the slightest risk and reduce the current Israeli-Palestinian conflict to a conflict between Jews slash Israelis who are all colonialists, racist, religious, and quote, pro-imperialist, end quote, with a few exceptions, and Palestinians slash Muslims slash Arabs who are all anti-colonialist, anti-imperialist, and internationalist without exception. A comforting fairy tale for leftists mourning a European revolution that is yet to come. 12. An image of imperialism, specifically of American imperialism, influenced by conspiracy theories. Its critique is reduced to the denunciation of some criminal presidents or generals often compared to Hitler and a, quote, Zionist lobby, end quote, supposedly dictating its policy to the U.S. state. Such, quote, theorists, end quote, blend well with the cultural anti-Americanism of the nationalist right, the Gaullists in France, for example, and nationalist left. This trivial left anti-Americanism was fed by Stalinist parties throughout the Cold War and even a long time afterwards. Its aim was to build an alliance with the national bourgeoisie in every European state, and this pro-Soviet stance was strongly stimulated by Russian subsidies. The fuck? One second. Son of a bitch. Fucking goddamn computer. Go back. Mm. Where the fuck am I? Okay, here we are. About talking about anti-Americanism. Its aim was to build an alliance with the national bourgeoisie in every European state, and with this, and this pro-Soviet stance was strongly stimulated by Russian subsidies. These conspiracy theories and trivial left anti-Americanism fit very well with the explanations propagated by Sunni and Shia groups, 
whether they are protected by their governments or dissident internationalist jihadist groups, which denounce the, quote, great Satan, end quote, the United States, end quote, little Satan, end quote, Israel. We can observe a convergence between these three phenomena. Various forms of modern Marxist or third worldist anti-imperialism, traditional anti-Judaism, and confused anti-Zionism with intertwined nationalist and religious origins. This political convergence explains the perfect cohabitation in demonstrations held in Western countries between the leftist and the most reactionary political Islamist. Three, thirteen, an inability to oppose the establishment of an unlikely question mark European imperialism, and a quote, excuse me, and a parenthesis unlikely question mark and parenthesis European Union in other terms than those of nationalism and regionalism. Sorry, that was a weird sentence. Critics of the creation, operation, and development of the European Union are often based on the same conspiracy theories as right and far-right anti-capitalism and trivial left anti-Americanism. Far right slash far right anti capitalism denounces the alleged influence of the Illuminati, Freemasons, stateless Jews, Bilderberg groups, trilateral, etc. Trivial left anti Americanism overestimates the role of the NATO of NATO of US maneuvers in the International Monetary Fund, World Bank, and the United Nations. Both right and left remain silent in front of the geopolitical maneuvers and military interventions of Russian imperialism or at least underestimate its power. Both denounce, quote, Brussels bureaucracy, end quote, German omnipotence, and European, quote, oligarchs, end quote, as if the heads of state, ministers, MPs, and parties were not represented in European Union institutions, as if most large, medium, or small capitalists did not support the European Economic Integration Project, as if all difficulties could be reduced to the dictates of wicked Germany, treacherous sabotage of the pro-American British, quote, poodle, end quote, and Yankee will to create discord among European states. In a context of massive identitarian crisis among European peoples, it's not surprising that anti-Semitism resurfaces, one of the historical and cyclical functions of anti-Semitism is, in fact, to cement national unity, including in countries such as Japan, where the Jewish presence was and is still insignificant. This symbolic dimension of anti-Semitism in relation to the question of identity is completely ignored by leftists and anarchists obsessed with what they call anti-Zionism. 14. Faced with increasing globalization, leftists blindly follow the themes put forward by an the anti-globalization galaxy, a galaxy funded by public mana, both in North and South. I don't know if that's supposed to be mania or what. This anti-globalization galaxy and its Marxist thinkers are unable to criticize populist regimes and reformist and nationalist trends in the South. In the name of democracy, they welcome in their meetings and events supporters of conspiracy theories, the most reactionary representatives of political Islam, and reactionary Christian politicians or ecologists as far as they defend protectionist or isolationist positions. This presence of a sizable reactionary contingent, openly active within the anti-globalization movement, has strengthened the propensity to anti-Semitism under the guise of anti-Semitism and anti-imperialism. The permanent denunciation of the alleged decisive role of cosmopolitan finance and American superpowers and, and American superpower has only promoted anti-Semitic theories. Given the absence of a materialist analysis of the fundamental mechanisms of capitalist exploitation and geopolitical relations between the powers. 15. The disintegration of the working classes, the forms taken by deindustrialization in major Western capitalist countries, the rising unemployment, and the extension of the, quote, precariat, end quote, have totally confused anarchist and far-left activists who expected a victorious revolutionary wave in the 60s and 70s.
These unexpected phenomena, poorly analyzed, made them even more permeable to all post-colonial, post-modern ideologies. These ideologies claim to deconstruct all theories, including classical revolutionary theories invented by, quote, dead white European males, end quote. They intend to replace them with a relativism which endlessly fragments the exploited masses into countless minorities defined by the multiple specific forms of domination they suffer from. The class-based ideology of the workers' movement, which saw in the proletariat the main revolutionary subject and vanguard of social transformation, had some flaws. But at least it was a safeguard, a common reference, which one could assert against the deleterious influence of anti-Semitic anti-capitalism. The propaganda of most anarchist and leftist groups is less and less class-based. It is increasingly disconnected from the world of wage earners and places of production. This can only facilitate a general political regression even outside the infiltration attempts or ideological recuperations made by the far right. Anyway, the far right has led a very clever ideological war for 30 years, strengthened since the invention of the internet by its massive presence on all social networks. The far left and anarchists are unable to effectively counter this ideological war as they are entangled in the ambiguities of their anti-Zionism and refuse to analyze their responsibilities in the dissemination of anti-capitalist and anti-imperialist left anti-Semitism. Thanks for listening, everybody.